Hello everyone and welcome back to deploying an NFT smart contract with Python. Previously in this project we installed the dependencies to use Web3 Python in Colab. We built an NFT smart contract, we compiled the contract with Python, and we deployed the contract with Python to a test Ethereum network. In this lecture we're going to learn how we can interact with the NFT contract in Python. So we already have a reference to the NFT object that exists on the blockchain at a specific contract address. And we can interact with it thanks to Web3. So we're interacting with a unique deployment of the contract. So we can reference the contract with our variable NFT object. And we can call its functions using NFT object dot functions. This property functions refers to the functions in your smart contract. So in our smart contract, we have several functions, balance of total supply, owner of, get all mammoths for, owns, transfer. So these are the functions that we can access as long as they are public or external. And we can access them via this functions property. For example, we can access total supply by calling it. And notice you have to pass in arguments if they're required for the function. This call function means you are just accessing a value or trying out a transaction, but it's not an official transaction. It's just a call. And we'll take a look at how to perform an official transaction shortly. But first, let's start with just call. So when we call this function, we get the result of zero because our total supply is zero. If we want to increase the supply of our NFTs, we have to mint an NFT. So let's take a look at an example of minting an NFT. We can take our NFT object and use its functions property. And we have a function to mint an NFT in our contract. We have this public function create mammoth gen zero and also a public function create mammoth. So let's use this create mammoth function. We have to pass in its exact name and then pass in the arguments that it requires. So in our case, we need the mother ID, the father ID, the generation, the genes and the owner. So that is what we need for the create mammoth function to work. Let's pass in a mother ID of one, a father ID of two, a generation three, and a genes, we can pass in a random number. Then we need the, also the owner. So let's just give ourselves the NFT with web3.eth.default account being the owner. So that will be the owner of the NFT. And if you want to make this a real NFT minting, you have to make a transaction. So if you just do call, this isn't a real transaction. This is just getting a value or trying out a function. So you can try running call and you'll get a result of zero and you can try it again and you will still get the same result of zero. So if you check the total supply, you'll notice it will stay at zero because call is again, it's not a transaction on the blockchain, so it doesn't actually mint the NFT. That's why total supply remains zero. If you want to mint an NFT and have it be permanent, not just a test like this, then you have to call as a transaction. So I'm going to call create mammoth yes, but instead of with the call function added, I'm going to change that to transact. So this call becomes a transaction, which means it has to cost you ETH, real ETH for the mainnet or test ETH for a test network. But this means you're actually doing a transaction on an Ethereum network. The result will be the transaction hash for that transaction. Okay, so we can run this code cell and then we can inspect the transaction hash. Then we can also get the transaction receipt. So for that, we already did this previously with this web3.eth.wait for transaction receipt. So we're doing the same thing again with our new transaction hash. Then we can inspect the transaction receipt. Okay, so here we have all the details about the transaction, like the block hash, the contract address, from whom the transaction was sent, 
as well as logs about the transaction. So then we can check our total supply again and run this function. And now look at that, the total supply has increased to one. And if I call this transaction again, then I can have another transaction hash and I can check my total supply again. And look at that, this time it's two. But if I just use a call function, not a transaction, then my total supply will not increase. It will stay at two. And you can see that even when you perform call. Okay, so that's because for calling, it's typically used for getting a value, just checking a value, like the total supply. But if you want to actually add a value, change a value, mint an NFT, or change a value in the smart contract, or add a value to a list, you have to do that via a transaction because transactions are required to perform an official interaction with a smart contract that lives on the blockchain. All right, so that is how you can interact with your NFT via Python with Web3. So we are interacting with our NFT smart contract instance that exists in a block on the blockchain. And that completes our project deploying an NFT smart contract with Python. We learned how to install dependencies for Web3 Python in Colab. We built an NFT smart contract. We compiled the NFT with Python. We deployed the NFT to a simple test network. So now it lives on the test Ethereum blockchain. And we learned how to interact with the NFT smart contract on the blockchain via Web3 Python. Join me coming up next, we're going to start a new project. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.